Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us today. Finally, in a long while, we finally have a triple threat going again. We got the whole crew back together. Welcome back to the podcast. This podcast is one of the most realist podcasts you'll ever come across. Yes, as real as my opinion about this year's King of the Ring tournament. We are only two matches in. Screw this tournament. You guys already went in the wrong direction. Hashtag push Cesaro. You also Peace. just went in the wrong direction uh, because we haven't even introduced the episode. Dan, the man, doing the run-in, making the save. Are you, though? BA select start, baby. BA select start. Anyway, um, I, I guess I'm commandeering this part of the intro because you went off on a tangent. Welcome to part of the me. Anything Wrestling Podcast. You've got the shunt, Dan the man, and... Um, the one, the only, the legal representation, the advocate of advocating advocacy. <laughs> I don't know what other adjectives to use. Uh, the commish. Um, yes, he did go on a tangent, a very crazed, belligerent, angry tangent that was stopped and derailed momentarily because if he keeps going off the rails... This episode that we're trying to put out won't get put out correctly. You guys realize that going yeah, off on the... No, no, no. Speaking no. of putting out. No, what? you guys realize that if we go <laughs> off on the rails, that's very natural because we do that all the time. No, but like you're going completely off the rails on an angry tangent about a tournament that's barely starting. Exactly. Hey, the shunt. why don't we uh, let the people know what our topic is today? Should we? Probably. I mean, okay. That, that's why we're here. I mean... Is it? And uh, why don't you also let them know where they can do their own independent research on this topic. You can find all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only $9.99. $9.99? It's not $10. It's not $1,000. Not one! A million dollars! But... <laughs> Nine ninety nine. Careful with that. We might have legal issues with that. Eh. Well, not per se because he's not really a part of the WWE anymore, and that's not his character anymore. It's just what the natural one. I believe so. That that's what he's. Yeah, I think he's going back to his original roots. Dustin Rhodes. Or was it Dustin Rhodes? No, uh, Dustin Rhodes. I don't know. <laughs> what was that company? Uh, I don't know. Something about them being all in. No, no, his the the other company. Oh, where he started that, that one, uh, where his father had this like like tangent about it with an accent like W C W. Wrestling. Um. Watch out. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, with that out of the way. Um, this episode is actually very special to me because we are here to talk about someone who unfortunately passed away a few years ago, um, career went, went through a downward spiral. Uh, she was one of the most innovative wrestlers to ever step foot in, in a WWF ring. Today's episode brought to you by really nice plates. Well, born Joan Marie Lohrer. Um, yes, she was regarded as the ninth one of the world. Professional wrestler, glamour model, bodybuilder, actress, and yes, yeah. pornographic film actress <laughs> as well. What? That's what is listed. I'm not making. <laughs> no, I know, I know. My I God, know, I, I know. It's funny that I they, mean, it, they put it like that. I mean, when it's made up on Wikipedia, it since, must be accurate. Pornographic film actress. PFA. <laughs> um, no, but if we could be serious for a minute. Yeah. Um, honestly, honestly, uh, I said it right before we started recording. Before there was a women's evolution, revolution in 2015, you have to go back all the way to 1997. 
because uh, there was one woman who was actually breaking those barriers and breaking those glass ceilings of women are just valets and they're sex items and there's someone for the, just the fans to look at. Uh, in, in WWE, I'm not not, not not overall, just no, WWE. I know, I know. Jesus. I can do. Um, but, I mean, uh, I guess I'm taking a survey here. Oh, that's me. Hey, yo. Oh, Jesus. Um, what did you guys think of China? I liked China. I thought she was an interesting uh, uh, specimen and character because, for the most part, you saw those dainty-ass little women who, like you said, mostly valets. Um, but then you have, I don't know, did you say how tall she was? She was big, wasn't she? Five foot ten. Yeah, for for a woman, that's pretty. That's pretty big. So five ten. Um, however many. I mean, I don't care how much she weighed, but she was one eighty. Uh, of of muscle for the most part, she was jacked, and I think that's what made her so interesting. Now, uh, vocally, was she the most entertaining character? Eh, maybe not. She had sort of a flat voice, but. Uh, you saw her in the ring with the guys. Um, she was the first woman in the Royal Rumble. Yes. Uh, Intercontinental champ. First female, uh, only, only female Intercontinental only champion. Only female Intercontinental champion. Yeah. Um. But yeah, she 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 had she had a lot going for her yes. that you can't really imagine most of the other women actually getting. Like right. Even. Even uh, who was the next closest person? Beth? Yes. And then Awesome Kong there for two seconds. Oh. Amazing in Kong? The, in the WWE Karma. Kong. Karma. That's what her name is. Her fate. Uh, but Car- yeah, Karma could have potentially been the next female to like be put into a match with men. Just based on size alone. Um, but then she got, her- got herself pregnant. Pregnant. And uh, had to leave, and now she's on Glow, so good for her. But uh, no, China, China was definitely uh, she was out there paving that paving that way. Yes, like mo- m- most people, like Trish and Charlotte and all the other women, like say like, "Oh, I did it." No, I did it. Or if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have this path. Or blah 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 blah. But they, I think. Maybe it's something that Vince tells them in the back to not bring her up still. Mm. But it's just something where it's like, okay, technically China is the one who paved all this road for you. Because she broke the barrier of not being a valet. She broke the barrier of not just being like this little sex object. Um, She, yeah, granted that first impression, oh, this is like a woman who looks damn near like a bodybuilding male... like wrestler um she made it look like you can be strong you can be powerful but still display like eventually later on throughout her WWE career like sexuality and be like that star studded female presence that most females are it's just back then you didn't you you didn't get that with most of the other females you only got that with her that she can't break those barriers. She can't set the standard of what a woman wrestler should be. But she did. And, I mean, for her to, like, stand up to guys like Kane or uh, Triple H, Angle, Jericho, Eddie Guerrero, like... Mark Henry? Huh. Huh. That's just amazing. Yeah, I think that China did a lot, you know, nowadays there's a lot of, oh, we're doing this for the first time, we're doing that for the first time. I think China could say that before anybody. First Royal Rumble entry as a woman, first Intercontinental Champion, first woman to actually go in there and mix it up with the guys and sometimes even take an ass kicking. Um, but I think she literally had everything. Like yeah. the, the the look, you know, the appeal. Uh, yeah, you're right, Dan. When it came to talking on the mic, not the best, not the worst. Yeah. Um, 
So she was doing really good, you know, having all these feuds, very entertaining stuff. I even said it before we started recording, you know, the stuff she was doing with Eddie Guerrero gave her more personality because first when she came, she was just this person who would just cross yeah. her hands and just stare, you know, while Triple H had his matches. Um, his enforcer girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I even see that's the thing is that back then they realized okay we, we have to build on this we got to capitalize you know so that's why they gave China personality and said okay go out there do this do that you know be a little bit funny with DX be a little bit more assertive and female esque like around Mark Henry yeah. or you know be that innocent like female like you can be like every other female around Eddie Guerrero <laughs> Confuse the audience a little bit. <laughs> Play with their emotions. They they had a knack for doing that back in the day. Um, yeah, it was called proper creativity, aka attitude era. Um. So all this is going well. Roughly 2000, 2001 comes around, and it seems like something that happened backstage sort of pissed with China's career. Um, so China and Triple H were in a relationship in real life and in storyline. Um, and then it seems like slowly as the Stephanie and Triple H feud or uh, storyline started coming into play, Triple H starts having an actual relationship with Stephanie. And then China just kind of gets pushed to the side. Um, and from all the interviews that I've heard, China says that she tried to figure out what was going on, but Triple H was just kind of like, nah, off you go. Um, China was the women's champion, and I think that she literally um, was fired from the company just a few months later, after yeah. when she became champion at WrestleMania 17. Um, Which, I mean, I don't want to necessarily assert this, but I mean, it's not like we haven't heard rumor before that... WWE likes to meddle in the relationships of their people. And if Vince had developed an affection for Triple H, he might have tried to like push the he might have tried to push that relationship with his daughter to be like, I want him as my son. Um and then kick China to the to the curb so that she wouldn't cause any issues. Um I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. It's it's just a shame because it was abrupt, and I think that China could have still gone a little bit longer. Um, but then, unfortunately for China, it seems like this downward spiral just kind of started, where uh, she was distraught by the whole thing with Triple H. Uh, she started doing pornography. Um, I think she also had some. Drug issues? Oh I'm, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure about that one. That's. I mean, if I recall correctly, I believe that's why she's no longer with us. Yeah, an um, alleged overdose is how they describe it. Yeah. Um, but then it seems like it's probably Kevin Sullivan. It's. It seems like as China was <laughs> was doing stuff outside of WWE, WWE was kind of like, okay, well now we're just, we're, we're, we're no longer going to mention her name. They basically Stevie Richards her. We're not going to mention her. We're not going to acknowledge her. Whatever she's done is just, eh. Um, but then China through social media, there was one video that I saw, which was kind of heartbreaking. Sean, let's not go into details. Those videos are inappropriate. You... I'm kidding. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> she literally had a video where it was very professional. No cursing, no slurs, no nothing. She literally says, Triple H and Steph, please let's meet up, let's talk, let's hash everything out, and allow for me to come back to work. Um, from what I know, that fell on deaf ears. There was no response, there was nothing. Um, and honestly, it's like there's really no other play. I mean, yes, yeah, she went to TNA for, for a minute, I think for one match with Kurt Angle, which was cool to kind of get one last look at China. Um, and then it was her untimely death back in 2016 where she just passed away and uh, one of the more deaths that was a little bit hard to believe. Like there, there's a few where it's like, if it's a Roddy Piper or a Dusty Rhodes, when they have some age on them, it's like, okay, you know, it, it's, you know, it was about time. 
But with China, it was, uh, you know, she was young. I felt like she still had a lot to offer the business. Um, she passes away. And I mean, uh, well, I mean, what do you guys think? Before we get into the whole uh, cop out of the Hall of Fame and insertion of the 2K games, what did you guys think of that period of from when China was released to right before her death? Um, what was your guys' perception? What were you thinking? I, th I think early on, part of my my impression as to why it happened was because of the whole porn thing. Um, I thought that that kind of like put a bad taste in WWE's mouth, and they were like, "Eh, we're we're good. We're gonna go a different, more wholesome." Uh, path, but then of course you've also got the the Playboy legacy within WWE and uh, the barking like a dog legacy. And, but uh, no, I th like I think that that I thought that that was like the big catalyst that initial thing. But then obviously, what wasn't wasn't the first one with Sean, Sean yeah, Waltman. Waltman, yeah, and he got to stick around. So who is he friends with? The big guys. Um, so uh, it, it's definitely a questionable questionable thing. They certainly do make exceptions. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it's definitely a shame because uh, I think that the... It was one of those things where the, 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 the chain of events is probably the catalyst for all of her questionable decision-making. Well... Okay. Before like it's taken further, like at like the the start of like her celebrity life, as far as out of the WWE, like well, she was still there. It seemed was like she on Big Brother at one point. No, it was a uh, uh, celebrity rehab. Mm. Well, no, not I, I forgot what that stupid show was. It was way back in the day. Like, uh, well, well, I'll find it, but. Like, here, if you want to look. Yeah, Essentially what it was is that she... She was given opportunities while being backstage, like, having, like... Yeah, she was doing Playboy. She was developing her own name out of the WWE. But it wasn't to the liking of Vince. But at the same time, like, her relationship was dwindling with Triple H. Yeah. Like, their actual relationship... So at one point, yeah, you saw them like kind of like do their own thing while, like, it was after WrestleMania 17 where she literally like, just destroyed what it was Ivory. It was at WrestleMania yeah. 17, yeah. That right after that was like her last match. Yeah. Because they didn't really fire her after that. It took months after to let her contract just expire, and then after that, it's like, all right, well, I'm out of the WWE, you know. Um, I had to give up a championship that I had won. You know, I mean, I had my WrestleMania moment. Apparently, that didn't mean a damn thing anymore in the record books. So now it's like, oh well, I still have fame. People still want me around. So that's when the weird decisions started to come around. Like, oh, you know, I still have a relationship with someone who works in the business. I am wanted everywhere. You know, I'm seen now as a sex object, um, things like that. And, it, and it's not that it was, like, necessarily the best route for her. I'm sure, like, just like everyone else that deals with it, they deal with injuries. Like, what's the first thing they go to? Like, painkillers and all the horrible downward spiral effect of prescription drugs. Like, they don't find natural, like, drugs to, like, cure yeah. them or heal them or, like, find a proper way to, like, get treatment for everything that you put your body through throughout the years and I, I I know her name is Joan or Joanne I, I think of her as Joni for some reason but it's like it, it just sucked like how her career went at that point because it seemed like she could have had proper guidance if she was around the right people Granted that Sean was not in the right place either yeah. at the time. Like he dealt with his own demons. Like he had been fired from the WWE in two thousand two, two thousand three. Yeah, uh, it was uh, the surreal life. There we go. Yeah, God, that was a horrible show. She also had had the had her book. 
the autobiography. Yes. So um, she found some some success there too. But um, like, like okay, how did you guys when when you guys heard the news that China had like to me it was like it was like it was one of the more surreal deaths where I'm like, what? Like she's gone? Um, but what 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 did you guys think when when you guys heard that news that China Johnny Lore has passed away? Alleged overdose. Um. I was I I was a little I was a little sad, um, but I I I can't say I was totally shocked, because I had seen some of the clips of her when she was on the reality shows when she was struggling with her problems, and I, you you could tell from that that there was a lot of a lot of things going on in that head, and did they ever specify what her problems were? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Um, I saw when I was browsing through there. I saw something about her sister uh, after she died, talking about how her mental health was one of the factors in mm-hmm. her and, and Triple H breaking up. But the substance abuse. Yeah, and, and I would. I I feel like she would probably have been on certain gen, like generic drugs for the the mental health side of it. Um, but, I think she was taking antidepressants or something for yeah. her anxiety. Um, so you probably have that, maybe some Xanax, uh, probably some painkillers because alcohol. they numb everything, not to mention alcohol. Um, so I think the fact that she just wasn't really able or unfortunately maybe not all that willing because she probably had a lot of baggage and she didn't want to face it. Um, she didn't get the help that she needed, uh, and eventually it just caught up to her. So I was, I was, I was disappointed and sad that it, that it came to that, but I, I wasn't shocked by it. I just found it, okay, like, the last time I had really seen her on TV was The Surreal Life, and it's like, all right, you're not as big as you used to be, you're fitting the female frame body work that the average female at 5'10 would have if you're not that much of an athlete anymore um usually the surreal life is seen as like a place where it's like oh you're a reality tv star or celebrity that is now in a house with has-beens and other people who can't really cope with their problems and on the show she would drink she would de- she dealt with what's his name on that show as well um uh sean and then I think that's the last of it, other than every now and then, oh, China does porn. China has a new porn out. It's like, okay. But then 2016 comes, and it's like, I forgot what it was. On the internet, of course. Oh, uh, Joni Lore, K, or formerly known as China, uh, has passed away. I'm like, what the hell? So I look at the article, I read it, I'm like, holy shit, like, she overdosed. She died of of drug abuse. But then I didn't see it as a surprise because it's like, all right, you do a lot of porn. uh, You end up on reality TV shows and you don't really do much to put your name out there anymore. Who knows what you were dealing with? Who knows if you were really dealing with like not the issues of fame and fortune, but the issues of the the consequences after with drug abuse with mental health problems or just the whole thing of like not keeping it together because of bad decision after bad decision and you know the people that you thought cared about you at one point just turned their back on you completely and it didn't help that like she chose to make some of those decisions like oh you know well they don't want to give me an opportunity back or they don't want to mention me anymore it like all the jabs and all the spite like those all came from bad decisions and if she had gotten the proper help literally right after um she left the WWE maybe just maybe she could have had a more prominent career or she could have still be alive you know but it's just unfair and it's unfortunate because again we don't take people's issues into account when we have a grudge with them or we have some kind of spite towards them. And it sucks because 
she was in that situation where it's like, oh, well, no one's there for me, so I'm going to turn to pills and drugs. Well, I mean, again, I would like to think that she tried. Like I said, there is a video, might still be uploaded, where she literally calls out Triple H and Steph and says, let's bury the hatchet. So someone who's willing to do that and throw that out there, and I know Triple H is usually the guy who mends fences and, you know, let's bygones be bygones. Um, I don't know if there, if, if you, if it's written there, if she ever tried to check into WWE's wellness program. Or, I'm sure. Um, because I know that usually they take care of current and ex WWE stars who try to check into um, the wellness program to help them out. No, nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, anyway, uh, so China, unfortunately. No, the way you just seg- segued into that. Well, anyway. <laughs> uh, so, after China's death, I think the next most controversial thing to happen without China physically being alive was the Hall of Fame. Um, earlier this year, before Mania, of course, you have the, the Hall of Fame ceremony. And I can't say that I'm the only one, because I know that we've all expressed this collectively and separately. So news breaks out that D Generation X is uh, in the Hall of Fame, and surprise, surprise, China is in the graphic of D Generation X, but she's not going in as China. She's going in as oh, a part of DX. And I know that my gear started turning, and I'm sure your guys' gear started turning, where it's like, okay, so you're acknowledging her, but you're not acknowledging her. Yeah. Um. What did you guys think about that whole deal? Like, and I know during the the speech, like, they had a quick second where they, you know, talked about China in spirit, and apparently her sister was there in attendance or whatever. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, so you wait until the poor thing passes away, and then we start with all this? Like, oh, let's bring her sister in, let's make her comfortable, let's mention her name, let's put her in the Hall of Fame, you know, as a part of D-Generation X. That... I'm like, okay, Triple H, you mend fences and you do a lot of great things, but this is, this is, this ain't well, working. What, what, we don't know if it's his way of doing this. What if this is, again, the old man himself, like... What if this is the compromise? Maybe yeah. it's, maybe Triple H is the, is the reason she, she was even peppered in there, but Vince was resistant. Like, Who, Vince, like he could have been like, oh... I want her in, and I think it's time to acknowledge her as herself. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't want what she did even mentioned. And he's like, all right, well, you have to give her something because that's unfair of you. Can you at least let us put us in and let her be a part of it? (laughs) Yeah, because if you think about it, like, yeah, DX was Sean and Hunter, and then... Hunter and uh, Road Dog, Badass, X Pac, and China, and then it's again Sean and Hunter. But it's like I get it. You feel like it's a cop out, but maybe he had that's the, that was his only way. Because again, the old man can hold a grudge so long with so many people. Now, is it right? No. No, it's not. Um, she, she, like, because when you think of a Hall of Fame, you, you imagine that it's people who made an impact. Yeah. Like, people who made a positive impact on your industry in question. Uh, in the case of the WWE, um, I don't know that you can say there's really another female who made as much of a cultural impact on the industry as Joni did. Yeah. So the, the, the avoidance is, is um, it's immature. And I think it's kind of the, it, it's letting your own personal grievances get in the way of, of, of doing your job. Because um, I think it was kind of the same thing with, uh, with Randy, Randy Savage. He didn't get brought in. And part of that, I, from what I recall, was Lanny being a douchebag. But his, his brother. Oh. Um, because I, I think I had read that WWE a couple, like a year or two before his death, 
was like, hey, or no, is that what it was? No, because he died, and then it was a couple yeah, of years yeah. where they didn't induct him, and you're kind of like, what the hell? And it's because Lanny was trying to be like, no, if you induct him, you induct all of us. And it's like, but, but what did you really do, Lanny? By comparison, what, what, what cultural impact did you make on wrestling? Yeah. Um, and eventually, um, Savage got in there, but why did it have to wait till he died? Damn. Why did it have to wait until he died? Um, and maybe that was also, um, part of Randy's decision. That's probably mostly Vince's decision, because Vince is probably still, um, rubbed the wrong way about the fact that, I don't know, there could have been a little thing between that. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, um... But there's a precedent for this, but it doesn't make it right. I just personally feel like if Triple H wanted to, even before becoming COO, whether this was in storyline or, you know, behind the scenes, um, I felt like he could have buried the hatchet with her if yeah. he really wanted to. And I remember one time he was on a Steve Austin podcast and Steve Austin said, can China be in the Hall of Fame? Can't she be welcome back? And I think this was maybe right before her death. Triple H going, oh, well, you know, if she comes in here, little kids are going to Google her name and stuff's going to come up. And I'm like, X-Pac is literally right there. Like, that makes no sense. X-Pac is there. You just had Candace Michelle back on mm -hmm. uh, television. Kelly Kelly in the expose. And I mean, this is, uh, it's not the same thing, sort of semi, not really, the whole Hulk Hogan thing. Yeah. Um... And it's like, well, you welcomed all of them back. You advertised them. So what did China do any different? Paige. Um, I'm just saying, there's, there's plenty of people who have um, questionable, questionable things that happened. that Xavier they did before. Xavier Woods and was a champion right now. And, and so that's, that's also sort of a, a cheap-ass excuse. That's, that's kind of where I'm coming from. It's like, I, I, you guys may be right. Maybe Triple H was like, look, it's been a few years since her death. Come on, let's get her in here. Um, and yeah, maybe that was the compromise. Was Okay, she's in, but with all of you guys. Well, this is what I'm reading right now. That even after the thing, like Hunter and Shawn Michaels have both stated, like, she needs to be inducted a second time. Alone. Separate. Yeah. yeah. And <sighs> maybe this was... Um... Slowly peeling off the band aid. They're not ready to rip it off, but they're. It's like you have people that are there, like, just do it. Just get it over with. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, just stop being, do it. Like, stop being such a, like, I'm sorry to say, stop being a puss about it. Yeah. But it's like. I get it. Like, we've discussed this. It's a cop out. It's, it's BS. Like, she deserves better. But it's like. You have, like, you're right. You have people like with what Hulk Hogan has done countless times, full of controversy. Randy Savage. You have freaking Olden Warrior even had his own. Demons with the exception like of The Rock, I want to say you're probably not going to find someone who hasn't done something wrong outside of WWE. I'm trying to see if The Rock's done anything wrong. And it's scary if you think about it, because it's like having a long career like that in Hollywood and in wrestling, and not really doing. He's one. got a real good PR team. <laughs> real good. His manager's his ex. Did you know that? Really? And yeah. he just got married. Yeah. Yes. She was probably front row. Is she Armenian? The new one? I don't yeah. Know. I don't know. I no, don't I'm not trying her. to be stupid. I'm. I'm not saying you're being stupid. <laughs> Why would you imply that? Well, because you started shaking your head, and you're like, "Oh, oh here he what? goes again." Okay, well, anyway, moving on. We'll say she is. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to Google it just so <laughs> God damn it. Um, but no, mo most of the, like, you're right. A long, having a long career, there's not many, many people who don't have some sort of little black mark on their, on their uh, legacy. But most of those can be either removed with nail polish remover or just ignored. Or blow torched away. Yeah, you just... <sighs> Now, there is the occasional Stevie Richards where it's like, okay, that's deplorable. He's not in the Hall of Fame. No, I know. But it's no, just... but I, I know what you're trying to like compare it to, but 
No, I'm just the, trying to say that what China did is is not anywhere near that level. You're 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 saying yeah, you're saying that um, there's again a precedent in the form of Stevie Richards, where it's like what that person did never, yeah, never, yeah. But Stevie the extremeness of that that versus and like it almost makes it. It almost sets the bar really low for how to not get blacklisted. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what What do you... Because Snooka's in there, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the fact that the bar is you have to kill multiple people to not be put into the Hall of Fame is ludicrous that then she's been kept out because of some bullshit personal vendetta. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that took a little bit of a dark no, no, turn. No, 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 but... it, it, It's not that it, it, it needed it. It's just that, like, if you think about it, I'm I'm looking at Stevie's accomplishments post, like, wrestling, and the only thing that's, like, a Hall of Fame-worthy thing, and which is a cop-out, is that he's in the class of 2003 of Wrestling Observer. Yeah. And one award, the Future Legend Award. Like that's just well. saying, that's just saying like okay this is the only accolade you're gonna get post career yeah ever because of what you've done and honestly okay it, let, let's just throw it out there she did porn yeah she did drugs okay I'm pretty sure that's all a way of telling Vince McMahon you're an asshole yeah and she might have literally said that to him. You're an asshole. Who hasn't? I think we all have. Both, and of course, he's still going to outlive all of us. He is. My thing is like, what, what, like that, like if that's like the the most you have to do to still get in. What do you have to do to not get in? Oh, Stevie Richards. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, the bar is up here of how much you can do. And still get in. This is how low it is for what you can't do, and be out. So that's why when the Triple H was talking about, oh, but it, little kids are gonna Google her name, okay? And Google Jimmy Snuka. Mm. Google Stevie Richards. Real quick, go ahead, go to go to Google and just type China. Oh, so we are actually experimenting here on the podcast. Wikipedia page. First thing. Okay. This is how the internet works. Uh, her Twitter, okay. her Facebook, or a Facebook, IMDb, uh, YouTube videos. No, those are related to the other China. Oh, Black China? Oh, yeah. IMDb, and then WWE. Fandom, Power Fandom. by Wikia. Then we switch to Black China, and then we got... The, and then we're done. That's the first page. Now, out of curiosity, go to images. Oh, well, there's also probably safe search on... Um, no, I try as much not to keep... The... Oh, wait, is it? <laughs> I don't know. See, I have it all. Okay, so... Is there anything derogatory coming up? Uh... No. Okay. Yep, yeah, no. We're about 15... The, the, the first thing we got that's derogatory is a picture of her Playboy cover. That's okay. it. Before that, there's two images. The the one where she is, She Hulk. That's the reference of her porn. Yeah. One of her alleged. But she is porn. clothed. And then. But the see, a little kid shirt. is not gonna understand that. No, of course. But yeah. So it's. It, I mean. You know what? If I if I do it like this, like okay. Um. And while he does that, we, we can continue to, to shift a little bit. But uh, w while we were on the Wikipedia page, the, there's a 19-year gap. This is one of the things you wanted to talk about. 19-year gap between her video game appearances. Yes. SmackDown 2, I believe it said, was the last one. Yep. Um, and now announced for uh, 20, for 2K20. Yes. Um which, when it comes to video games, I know that 2K is kind of like, not that they're, they're their own thing, but they kind of have, because remember a few years back when CM Punk was the cover star, apparently 2K had to like push for that and go like, hey, this guy's your next cover star, WWE's like, 
no, maybe we can get like a shame or something. They're like, no, like you need to get CM Punk on the cover like right now. Because this is when the pipe bomb thing went yeah. off and all that. It's so, hot. Put your hand on it. It's hot. <laughs> yes. Um, so I don't know if this was a 2K move or if it was a WWE like, okay, just throw them a nugget. Just go. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, okay. Before you guys get into the uh, 2K video game thing. If you go to Google, you type WWE China. Uh, right after it, death, real name, net worth, dead, China and Eddie, 2K20, 1997, shirt, autopsy. Nothing in there pops up about Playboy, porn, or anything like that. Yeah. Now, unless these kids know the name to one of those things that she had done, which I don't know how... Yeah, let's try her real name. Huh, okay. So Johnny Laura comes up, right? Death interview measurements, grave, <laughs> plastic surgery, Instagram, funeral, WWE, surreal life. Try images. You really? Want no, I'm just I'm trying to see it's like what's gonna be would... the same thing. Anything derogatory? No, I think I think it's essentially the same sequence of photos. Okay. Well, you get more of her images, like, out of the WWE. Of, co of course, yeah. I mean, yeah, some of them look a little, like... But they're, some, th those are mostly, like, Attitude Era photo shoots. Photo shoots, yeah. okay. So, so Triple H, don't give us BS about a little kid Googling her name and finding something. Um, but yeah, no, You yeah. know who probably doesn't know how to use Google? Vince McMahon. <laughs> oh, sorry, Vince. Okay, wait. So that on. laugh was scary. <laughs> Hold on, okay, one. It's like the Bray Wyatt laugh yeah. after the Fiend yeah. segments. Three, four, five. Aw. Six, seven, eight. Sorry, it was a picture nine, of Triple H ten, and her cuddling. <laughs> Okay, maybe like by the eleventh row of pictures, yeah, you see her like half naked. Yeah. Like with her ass out. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Where did I see it? It's like 25, 26 rows downward. Oh, like practically 30 rows down. Nah, that one. <laughs> Filmomania Triple X. Okay. It, but how long did it take before I found it? Yeah. So it takes a while. And even that's not explicit as far as photos go. Let's be honest here. With today's resources, kids can find it. Like, it doesn't even have to be China. It could be anything. Yeah. And they'll probably go to a hundred other things before they'll go to Before that. they come... Um, I was going to... I was going to say before they come back to China, but... Uh, no, I, I'd like you to elaborate on that. No, I think okay. you should elaborate. No, 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 it's fine. You already started the sentence. I, just I, I don't understand. What are you, what are you implying here? Nothing. Um, I mean, no, we need to know as an audience as well. We well, need you know. to know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> He's um, not going to say it. No, I ain't saying it. Um... No, yeah, so we get the Hall of Fame. Now we're getting her playable in 2K, and hopefully this becomes a traditional thing where she's just in the game in the future because if there's one female Tom who, de who deserves to be in the game each and every year, it's her. Um, I mean, for Christ's sake, you got a Lundra last year. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's where we are right now in regards to China. Like, that's the last thing is, oh, she's coming back into the, into the video games. Back into the fold. Um, which, but, again... Go ahead. No, I was, I was going to say, like... Because, okay, it, it's BA Select Start? Yeah. That's the, the title of... Of our side of, your, of your side series. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're putting her back in. Yeah. How far in do you think WWE creative, as far as the video game goes, is going to allot you... To play her character up until 2001 if you i'm sure there's story modes in these games or like career modes there is but i i don't think she's a, she's incorporated i think she'll be a towers maybe character. like a china tower yeah. okay so explain that so I it's basically it. like 
you play a series of matches and you have to get to the last thing. So it'll be like six matches. So yeah, it's, it's, a, oh, it's kind it's of like Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're climbing up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pseudo, yeah. pseudo story based gauntlet matches. As your own character. As your own character. Yeah. Okay, well, if the if such video games have allowed in the past, obviously, sometimes you, oh, I want to play as Triple H throughout his career, or Shawn Michaels, or whatever. If this were a feature allowed in, in 2K, like, obviously 2001 would be it for China, but, yeah. like, would you allot a continuance after if you're a video game developer? Like, okay... What could she have done? Could she have continued to revolutionize? Would Trish Stratus be as big as she is? Would Jackie be as big as she is? Lita. Uh, Lita. You know, what would have happened? Like, and now let's not only just talk video game wise, let's talk WWE. Real? Okay. Let's play, like, it's not Devil's Advocate, but it's more like. Did we have if, a game for it? For. For like for bookings, this. yeah. Or you know what? We might have talked about it. It's basically the what if. Yeah, kind of yeah. Okay, look. So you know what? We can kind of start now. Let's start a what if series about wrestlers that. It'd be hard if I actually added Stevie Richards, but we're not. Maybe one day we'll play Devil's Advocate with that. Um, but what if the fact that he says devil? Go ahead. Well, like we get it. Okay, what if China was still alive? Or was still in the WWE without her controversies. What if, like, she had resolved everything with Triple H? Where would her career have gone and how long would it have gone? Because what? After her, Trish had the belt. And it was Trish that was, like, starting to set the trailblazing path. With Lita probably a nanosecond right behind her. Yeah. I would hazard to say that, that if the issues never came up, because I think this might have even been something that they toyed with uh, way back, you could have seen her as your first female world champion in WWE. There was discussion of that. Um, that that's where, that at one point, I think it was around the Royal Rumble time yeah. when Austin eliminated her. That was the time where they're going to be like, Let's push. Let's pull the trigger on. What if we put the WWE Championship on? And they got so because like she would win number one contender matches. Then she would get to the actual match, and there would be an interference or shenanigans or, up or, or yeah, something stupid. Um, but no, yeah, go ahead, Dan. Uh, well, no, I was just saying. I think I think that you might have seen that come to fruition, maybe. Um. Because there was a chunk of time where you were seeing people she'd worked with before kind of ru- running rampant at the top of the card. And you also had a chunk of time where you had some smaller guys in the, the, in the realm of the Jerichos and the, the, the Guerreros. Yeah. So it would have been believable to put her against one of those guys for one of the heavyweight titles. Because um, we said 2001 was was when she left, yeah. and we did the brand split in 06, right? 02. Oh, so a year a year later, they had the two world titles. Yeah. So even if they didn't want to make her the first WWE champion, uh, she totally could have been a world heavyweight champion. And who was the first world heavyweight champion? Trips. <laughs> that's what I th- that's my one of my thoughts then is that that could have been. Um, right, so she wouldn't have. Really blazed the women's championship up. It would have been being the first female to hold the world a heavyweight. I think if she had still been around, but here's the thing: I think if you had had her become your first female world champion, and then after that played out, she slid back to the women's uh, division, division. I think that that would have then lifted that entire division then too, because then you've got. This female world heavyweight champion that then you have the girls figure out how to beat. And so then any time a, a girl actually gets the, the win over her, then they look even something. better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that especially when money in the bank cashing in kind of became a thing, I think that someone cashing in on China would lead to a pretty good story. Yeah. Like no one can beat her straight up. Someone had to cash in when she at least, at least expected it. Yeah. Or would it have been that, like, we would have seen 
the women's money in the bank way earlier at that point. Because at that point, like, when, when did Jericho introduce the oh, idea? Five. Okay. So let's just say, what was the most time we had a lot more female competitors? Oh, seven. Okay. You, like, name, name eight competitors. From 07? Yeah. From both brands. Mickey James. Hell, ain't even include WWE CW. <laughs> um, Mickey James. Mickey James, Ariel, Ashley, Candice. Kelly. Kelly. Was Eve in there? Eve. Not yet. Yeah, she, she was 08, 09 ish. Eve? Yeah. Okay. Layla, McCool. Yeah, you had a de- decent female roster around that time. You just need one more. I feel like I'm forgetting a big name. Maria? Molina? Molina Molina would have been, yeah. Molina or Candice. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Okay. You would have enough female competitors to have their own money in the bank match at that point. Yeah. And how? You could have China as the champion at that point. We would have seen that introduction at that point. And then it's like you could have had... Hell in a Cell matches, ladder matches for them, TLC matches for them, even later in the future. Like you, you could have you had. Might have seen the actual women's revolution before these the girls ever revolution. got there. Yeah. And then at this point now, you could have had like Charlotte, Becky, Sasha, um, Bailey, and all them um, have even more innovative firsts. Yeah. I mean. Because so at much that point, happen. you'd have to be reaching to find yeah. the firsts, as opposed to, oh, what's the most basic thing that these girls could do? Oh, what about a steel cage match? Oh, what about a ladder match? What about a TLC match? Uh, what about main eventing WrestleMania? Probably would have happened already. Yeah. like you, I think you could have had a women's WrestleMania main event by 09. Yeah. Maybe 2010. And I think if you go to that time... Your main event would probably be China versus Beth Phoenix. Ooh. That's one match that I, I, I was hoping that we would eventually get to see, but we never did. Okay, so you would say, like, okay, Beth came in 06, was injured, came back in 07, right? Yeah. Okay. So. Would you have headlined WrestleMania in 2009 with Beth Phoenix versus China? And that would China which, like. Which Mania was that one? The Shauna and Undertaker. First match, the first match they had, and see that's that's where it's tough because when that is on the card, nothing. Okay, beats but that. the year prior to that, who did the Undertaker race? Was it Edge? Yeah. Okay, so would you have done it then? Yeah. Okay, I, so that, that that's solid. At that place. point, you have China in from '01 to '08, another seven years of her career, which I. Some people don't last that long. Bless them, but usually female careers, especially at that time, didn't really last. Well, they didn't long. last because it's like, okay, they weren't built like China yeah. or Beth. They were built as, as oh, there are models, Barbie, there yeah. are and sex that, objects. And I think that's the thing, is that your, your petite little model frame uh, can't hold up. Mm-hmm. As much as the the big beefy guys, unfortunately, which is why you'll see Triple H, who's been doing this for fucking 20, seventy 20, years, forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but no, I think she, I think that China absolutely could have could have gone another seven, and she would have been fine if she would have uh, not been dealing with the things that she was dealing with. Yeah, but I mean, let's be honest here. Because hold on, when was when was TNA? Two thousand ten, I think. What? When, when did she go to TNA? 2011. 2011. So that's well within our time frame. Now, granted, she wasn't wrestling full time. Yeah. But also, you're, if you're... I mean, we, we speculated she might have wrestled the guys there for a minute. But if you're not wrestling the guys all the time, and a bunch of your matches are against the, the little petite girls, um, she'd probably been fine. Don't forget, they also had the whole uh, PG thing going on where, oh, the guys can't hit the girls. So I don't know if that... Well, we only have that because of what transpired next yeah. to what's his name. Yeah. Now, let's just say that still transpires, but you still have the competitiveness that the women's division had. 
but it's a little more turned up because of Beth and China. Yeah. Like, you could, honestly, at that year, we'll, I'll, I'll even take it back to, oh, wait. You could have had them headline WrestleMania. I think, at that point, you find out who's the better champion. Was it Beth Phoenix, or was it China at that point? And that even could have been, like, that could have been the last year of her career, even. No, that could be her retirement That match. would have been a great retirement match. Um... Because then that's you're passing the torch to Beth, who can then pass it on to somebody else. But at yeah. least you did it. Right. Um, honestly, when a wrestler goes away for a while, especially when they have a downward spiral, I think one of the best parts is when they make that comeback. Yeah. You know? Um, oh, you could have had China come back now. I was going to say, number 30 entered into Royal Rumble... Or not even that, like, okay, so, uh, but here's the thing, if we're still playing the what if, tag team championships would have already been developed, women's Royal Rumble would have already been in, as a comeback, then yeah, you either have her in at number 30 for the women's Royal Rumble, or you have her at number one. How about 24-7 champion? But no, 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 serious 24-7 champion, not, oh, she gets rolled up in a schoolgirl or schoolboy, whatever you want to call it, and oh, she loses, I'm talking like credible, credible champion. Guys and girls try to come after her, but she just, no, nah, you're not taking this from me. You were talking about bringing some le- legitimacy to a title? Yeah. Um, I think they're trying to right now with Elias, and that's a cop out to him. Mm-mm. So... Final question. I guess I'm taking another survey here. Hey, yo. (laughs) If China were still alive and she would be able to come back, what would be your dream match or matches that you would want to see her have with someone a part of the roster? I'm going to throw mine out there, and I know that these two talents that I'm going to bring up are going to bring a little... uh, but one match that I would love to see, China versus Nia Jax. Great match. And number two, China versus Ronda Rousey. What? Well, that's another of your, your big marquee matches, is you've got the, the, biggest, the biggest female to ever go through WWE versus Ronda, the... the, the Self-proclaimed... Baddest bitch? Is that what it is? Baddest woman on the planet? Baddest bitch in the room? I don't know. Um, what a, pff, wow. Um, I'm Shay- sorry, I don't like her. Hashtag Shayna's better. Hashtag Shayna's the only credible one out of the four horsewomen. Uh, anyway. Hashtag uh, push Cesaro. Oh my god. Really? Um, I'm not stopping. I, really? Now, I, I would say that I would have been excited to see China versus early Charlotte when she first showed up. Or like a little bit into her, her mm-hmm. run. Pre blonde Cena. Yeah, I, I hate her character now and her blown up fucking face and lips. Um, Tell us how you really feel then. Um she looks like um have you seen the trailer for uh what is it, the good boys? You know that that moment when the they're in the room and the thing is the, the 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 thing is on the bed, and they sit up. They go, "This one's pretty." Oh, I think so. I she looks like one of those. Yeah. Um. Anyway. <laughs> um. So I I w- I would have liked a match between those two. Um. I would have liked. A, I would have liked China versus Becky. Yes. The the man Becky. Yes. Um, and I think that a fun match. And at this point now, I'm just saying the the people who are are more recent. Um, you know what? I I got two more. I would say a fun match would be the the contrast between Alexa and China, and then you could have had um one of those. Look at this match stepping out of history matches between Trish and China. You could have done that as one of your like weird legend versus legend kind of matches. Um, maybe instead of SummerSlam Charlotte versus Trish, we had China versus Trish. Maybe. 
but it probably would have happened a couple of years ago. What about you? I kind of would... Okay, there's a few things I would have liked to see. Match and career. Match, and it happened at Evolution. I would have liked to see a six-woman tie between China, Trish, and Lita versus the Riot Squad. Ooh. Um... I would like to see the Naya versus China match. Um, kind of, I would actually do it two out of three falls, Ooh, wow. just to see who's the more dominant, like big female. And maybe I would actually like to see China as a manager to the man, to Becky, or to uh, to Bailey. If you think okay. about it, like, like, because everyone's been on this thing, like, oh, Bailey has always needed an edge. She's already sort of finding it. Yeah. If you had paired China with Bailey, she would have had that edge. Or hell, you can even have her like manage uh, Amber Moon. Okay. Like, you want to be a dominant female? You want to break barriers yourself? I'll show you how to do it. And. Because obviously, like, not to say anything bad about the, the female, like, African-American wrestlers that they have. Yeah. But it's like, okay, you give Naomi, you give Ember Moon small opportunity, and then it's like, you Squashed. don't see it. Yeah. If you had put China with one of them, I think they would have a lot more going for them. As far as, like, management one. Side question, what about for the guys? Would you have her manage anyone? Someone who... Like right now? Yeah, someone who can. Ooh, <laughs> that's an interesting dynamic. You can have her manage Braun, or um, I think maybe Roman Reigns. What about a Daniel Bryan? <laughs> <laughs> She's taller than him, isn't she? But I, I <laughs> but it'd be that weird I, time. I, it would kind of remind me of her and Eddie. Yeah. Again. That would be fun. That would be pretty cool to see, actually. Get Rowan out of there and put China in there. Yeah. It, 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 but, like, you can't make, like, China be a redhead, though. That's yeah, kind no. Of weird. Have China be the serious one and have Daniel kind of have that edge, but he's, he'll, he'll still pop the crowd here. Like, he's Eddie-esque. Yeah. In a way. Um, but, yeah, that, that's what I would want to see. Because, also, I could picture after she retires, she's, like, a manager or, like, Someone still in WWE trying to like manage and guide like either the female division or further empower the male division. Like, I still would make her presence known. I would even do Hall of Famer who makes sporadic appearances or comes back for a storyline. Yeah, like with and, Trish. And I do agree with I would have rather seen Trish versus China. Yeah, in a legend versus legend type match. But um. Unfortunately. Well, you can kind of get it in 2K. <laughs> Maybe. Is Maybe. Trish going to be in that? I believe she will be. Probably. Or probably. hell, what if you put paired China with Nikki? Nikki, Nikki Cross? Yeah. I like. Like. <laughs> like you have, like you, like you, let's say she never paired with Alexa. Mm -hmm. She was still psychotic and crazy. Yeah. And you had someone controlling that edge. And, and China slowly, was the one? And slowly breaking away off of that, yeah. Okay. Teaching her to embrace it. Yeah. I'm down with the sickness. Gotta be down with the sickness. Just don't be disturbed. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I tried. <laughs> um, Mine's in. So, uh, any other... Uh, Closing remarks, statements about China before we wrap up. Um, I mean, I feel like we can all be we, we're we're all kind of in agreement that uh, next natural course of action, induct her on, on her own. Um, I think it's a mistake to not just like like, like I if described, you, rip the band aid off and just like do if it. If you leave her in there just only with that in, like Hall of Fame thing that. It's a slap in the face. It's yeah, a, it's a cop out. Yeah. a horrible cop out that doesn't even matter, unfortunately. 
And for God's sake, just start mentioning her name. She is the reason for the women's revolution, revolution, whatever the hell you want to call it. Legends like Trish Stratus, the Great China, Alundra Blaze, la da da. That's all it takes. That's all you need. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Whatever it takes. It's an Avengers reference. Oh. <laughs> um. So there you go, guys. Uh, we just. Uh, covered our sentiments about what we feel about the career the life and times of china let us know what you guys think in the comment section below and we will catch you all next time